Carey, Ernie Johnson back with you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium where we are in between games of a twi-night doubleheader. I'd say we're going to start this second game all oh, about five to six minutes. First game went to the Dodgers 10 to 1. They had 10 hits and no errors. The Braves won 5 and 1. Honeycutt went the distance for the first time since July 27th of 1984 when he pitched a complete game against the Cardinals in St. Louis. He picked up the win. He's 8 and 12. Perez was a starter and loser, 1 and 10, and Pasquale was knocked out in the second inning after pitching 1 and 2 thirds innings, giving up 5 hits and 5 runs. Deadman, Camp, and Schuler also worked in the ball game. Honeycutt not only won the game, but he had the game winning RBI. The final score in the first game Dodgers 10 and the Braves 1. Bobby Castillo will get a start in the second game. You can see Tom Lasorda using everybody. Lasorda using. Castillo in the second and for the Braves will be Craig McMurtry if you didn't hear and we're going to repeat this story Rick Mailer was scheduled to start this ball game one of these games today he uh, he had a uh, broken bone in his pitching hand a small finger discovered today as you take a look into the Dodger dugout a broken bone, and we don't know how long Mailer will be out. Dave Persley said it's not in a cast, but he does have a protective device over his hand, and Mailer can start throwing anytime he'd like when it doesn't hurt. But it looks like his chance of winning 20 this year might be by the boards with the broken bone in the finger. Some of the Dodgers loosening up off to the left. Bobby Wine, Chief Nakahoma off to the right, and Skip Carey's got the starting lineup. Okay, Ernie, it'll be Mariano Duncan, who had five RBIs in the first game, leading off at shortstop for the Dodgers. Enos Cabell will play third base. Kenny Landro in center field again, and Mike Marshall in right. First baseman Greg Brock bats fifth. Mike Sosha will do the catching. He'll hit sixth. Len Matuzak in left field again, batting seventh. Steve Sachs hits eighth. And Bobby Castillo will do the pitching. He has no career record against Atlanta. He's 2-1 and one with a higher and run average, 5.4. Three for the Braves. Milt Thompson gets the call in right field against the right-hander. Glenn Hubbard will play second base. Dale Murphy in center field. Gerald Perry will play first, bat cleanup. Claudel Washington will bat fifth and play right field. Ken Obergfell is the third baseman, hitting sixth. Rick Cerrone will bat seventh and will do the catching. Paul Zuvella will bat eighth. And Craig McMurtry will do the pitching. McMurtry is... 0-3 for the year, a 6.69 earned run average. He's 0-1 this year, 2-5 lifetime against the Los Angeles team. Keeping up to date on the other baseball, the Padres and Reds 2-2 after four. In the big one, the Mets 5-1 over the Cards after two. Montreal 1-0 over Philadelphia after three. Pittsburgh 2-1 over the Cubbies. That's after four and a half. San Francisco and Houston about to start. One final in the American League. Baltimore got six in the eighth, beat Boston 7-5. That's the first to two. Detroit and Toronto are scoreless after three. And the other action is not yet underway. Here it's McMurtry against Castillo. And we'll be back with the play-by-play -play story from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium right after this from your sponsor. Reminder here, Super Football Saturday is coming. It begins at 12 noon Eastern. The University of Georgia Bulldogs take on the Baylor Bears at Athens, Georgia. And the action continues that night at 8 o'clock Eastern time when Pittsburgh and Ohio State get together. Bob Neal, Tim Foley will have the first one for you. Lindsey Nelson, Paul Horning the second one. And Braves Giants baseball will be in between, commencing at 5.05 Eastern time right here on TBS. That's coming up this Saturday. The umpires have made their way to the field, and they'll be Bob Davidson behind the plate, John Kibler at first base, Dick Stello at second, and Bruce Fremming. We'll call the plays at third. A crowd of close to 10,000 has gathered for the double dip, and it's just amazing. It's been a bad year for the Braves, no doubt about that, and a very good one for the Dodgers, but one big reason for both those stories is the way the Los Angeles team has handled Atlanta. They've won 10 of 13 this year, and of the last 33 games between these two teams, two-thirds of them have been won by Los Angeles, 22 out of 33. Mariano Duncan in the first game with five RBIs. He had only 24 all season long prior to that. And as you try to analyze the great success story that is the Los Angeles Dodgers in 1985, Duncan has to be a big part of it. He wasn't in their major league plans at all when spring training started. 
But Dave Anderson had some back problems. Bill Russell has, they feel, gotten a little rusty with age, though I think he's still a pretty good clutch hitter. At any rate, Duncan got the call at shortstop, and he has done a bang-up job. He's got speed. He has hit enough. He's right around the 240 mark, a little over that right now. He gives them good defense. Speed may be the most important part of his game. And so he's one reason why the Dodgers have done as well as they have. And let's face it, you look at the Braves situation, there are a lot of problems. But McMurtry, Barker, and Perez are three guys the Braves thought would be in their starting rotation. And I don't think it's unrealistic to expect of that trio 35 to 40 games. Well, instead of that, the Braves have gotten two wins from that group and something like 19 or 20 losses. As the Braves take the field here, and Craig McMurtry goes to the mound, we... Remind you, there will be switching live to Riverfront Stadium whenever Pete Rose bats, and that's going to be quite soon in all likelihood. I don't know how many outs are on in whatever inning they're in at the moment, but we do know that Pete is on deck, so perhaps before our game here gets underway, we'll be switching back to Ken Wilson and Joe Morgan in Cincinnati. The Braves have taken the field, and Manny Mota will again coach first. Joe Amalfitano at third for the Dodgers, and now Tom Lasorda makes his way to the field too talk things over with Bruce Fremming who worked the plate in the first game and will work third in this one. Defensively the Braves have Thompson in left field. Murphy in center. Both a speedy and good defensive outfield. Cordell Washington in right. On the infield Gerald Perry is at first base. Glenn Hubbard at second. Paul Zuvella will play shortstop. Ken Oberkfell is at third. Rick Sarone in there doing the catching on this hot night in the second game. And Craig McMurtry will do the pitching. Lifetime 2-5 and five against the Dodgers. He's 0-3, a 6.69 earned run average. He went to Richmond after a terrible start in Atlanta. And the last month or so he was down there, it looked like he had found himself. He came up and pitched not great, but really not badly in a couple of starts, and then hasn't started that much and has suffered, I think, from lack of work the last three weeks or so. And he still gives you a great cause for hope. Not because so much of what you see when he pitches, but every scout that you run into in this time of the year, you run into both National and American League scouts from other clubs as clubs get ready to try to improve their teams for 1986. And invariably, as you sit and have a cup of coffee or what other, whatever with those fellas, the question will be, what about McMurtry? What kind of kid is he? How is he doing? Well, the answer is he's not doing that well. He's a super kid. And the Braves are confident that he'll... One day, step to the four again, as he did three years ago. Duncan about to stand in. Remember, we'll switch to Cincinnati when Rose stands in, but not right now standing in for the play-by-play -play story. Here again, Ernie Johnson. Thank you, Skip. Duncan with five RBIs in the, in the first game. He has five hits in the series. Takes the first pitch low. Pete Rose has batted twice at Cincinnati, for those of you who didn't pick it up. He's batted twice. He's popped to short and flied to center. 0 for 2 at this point. McMurtry 1 and 0. Strike. We've had a transaction take place. California trying to win the American League West picked up Don Sutton from Oakland for two players to be named later. Sutton could help pitch him to the pennant, but he's not eligible for the playoffs because they got him after September 1st. That's what Don has wanted ever since he left Houston. Yeah. Back home. By the way, Pete Rose will lead off the next inning. He was on deck, but whoever batted in front of him made the final out. Down low, two and two. Cabell is on deck. He'll be followed by Landro. And a two-two. Well hit. Base hit right. Washington over quickly. Got to hurry on this guy. He bobbles it. Gonna be safe as bobble the second base by Zavella. If he holds it, he's out. Washington bobbled at first. That enabled Duncan to break for second, and we'll watch it again. Washington comes up, boots, wasn't ready to throw anyway, but he's got a great arm, and he's got him at second base, or so it appeared to us. A two hopper, and Paul just simply couldn't. He had the ball in his glove, but when he's Made the sweep, he lost it. A hit and error. Charge Washington with the error.
Here's Cabell. The curveball is missed. Cabell at 246, a couple of homers and 25 RBI. They got him from Houston. The Dodgers just slamming the Braves here in the first two games. 10 to 1 in the first game tonight. They scored nine runs last night in a 9 7 win. Ball and strike. Did you get that scoring a bit of brilliance? Yes. Single E9 on Duncan. Down low. He's going to third. He made it. And that could be a wild pitch. The curveball in the dirt. He was not going on the pitch. Yeah, it's in the dirt. It should be a wild pitch. And it is. I guess you could give Washington that air, but honesty compels you to report all Zavella has to do is tank him and he's out. Yeah. The Blue Jays and the Tigers scoreless in the fourth. Toronto trying to stay ahead of New York. I believe they meet later this week. Look at that. Going to fall, base hit. Rather be lucky than good, as they say. Reaching out, a little pop fly single to right, and it's one nothing already. What's better is being lucky and good, and that's been the case with the Dodgers here in this series. It looked like a screamer. Boy, he made a good pitch on him, didn't he? But Cabell got just enough of it to tramp it over the head of Hubbard. The batter, Landro. Runner going. Cabell gets a stolen base. Close play at second base. Cerrone's throw, not overly strong, but right on the money. Cabell just simply beat it by a fraction, and indeed he did. His eighth stolen base. No balls in a strike. Foul away. Still a rain delay at New York. It's five to one. The Mets over the Cardinals early. Grand slam by Howard Johnson. Solo home run by Tommy Herr for their only run. Only run for the Cardinals. Her is going to knock in 100 runs and do it with perhaps less than 10 homers. The one, two. High pop foul going to be in the seats. What is that for him? Is that his fifth or sixth? Fifth or, I think six. Well, let's look back and see. He had four when we were there, so I don't know. I think five, then. I don't believe he hit one against the Cubs. Cabell at second base. McRitree delivers outside. Milwaukee got two in the first inning, leading the Yankees 2-0 as they move to the second. And Baltimore beat the Red Sox 7-5 in the first of two. The question whether Earl Weaver will be back next year, he leans that way, but he is not signed through 1986. Earl Weaver, the manager of the Orioles. Foul away.
Landro with a single and an RBI. Shoot it out there. The Dodgers won't let up. Well, another pitch down, but Landro just hit the daylights out of it in the right field. Cabell has good speed. Washington had no chance on him. Leo Mazzoni to the mound. The Braves bullpen is in a bedraggled state to be sure, so they need Mack to pitch a lot better than he has to this point. The Tigers pick up a run. They lead Toronto one nothing, going to the bottom of the fifth. Game at Toronto. The Blue Jays and the Yankees both won last night. Mazzoni returning to the dugout. The Yankees are a game and a half back of Toronto, only one in the loss column. Great race there. Another one in the American League West. California, a half game back to Kansas City, but how about National League East? Mets and Cardinals tied before tonight's game. Marshall the batter. High into the air, out behind second goes Hubbard. One down. Marshall hitless so far tonight. Yesterday he had a home run along with four RBIs. So what's happened on this Dodger ball club? A couple of things really. Lasorda will tell you the first thing when he moved Guerrero to the outfield seemed to change everything. Guerrero went on a hitting tear. The whole team picked up in their hitting. They were batting 230 in May. They're batting almost 260 now. But various players are chipping in. How about Honeycutt? Pitched the first game and knocked in the winning run. And that's what it takes to win a division. Everybody has to contribute somewhere along the line. You can't just put it on one or two people's shoulders. Skip mentioned Duncan. What a surprise he's been. Brock at the plate, having a pretty good year. Sosha having one of his best years behind the plate. And then there's Valenzuela and Welch and that crew. Royce. I was just going to mention their pitching staff with, if not the lowest ERA in the league, it's close. And now Alejandro Pena is coming back too. He's not chopped liver. fast. He has 15 stolen bases. Strike call. The Dodgers do lead the National League in ERA. 2.86. What a pitching staff. 31 complete games and 20 shutouts. You get a pitching staff like that, you don't have to get too many runs. Cardinals are second in pitching. There's a pitch out. Then it's the New York Mets. talk about pitching and some purists will say well it's 70 to 80 percent of the game I kind of go along with that you have some isolated cases like last year the Pirates with good pitching best finish last time to go back to Cincinnati and see how Pete Rose is doing Ernie excuse me for interrupting
John Fricke in the studios here in Atlanta. We are going live to Cincinnati, WLWT-TV. Pete Rose's third trip to the plate tonight as he tries to break 41-92. That young man is Pete Rose, Jr. Pete Rose at the plate, live at Riverfront Stadium. Ken Wilson and Joe Morgan with the play-by-play. -play. Here it comes, first pitch to Rose, ball one. Padres two, Reds two. Pete Rose, 4,091 hits. 4,191. The next one is the big one. And there's a strike. One and one. Sitting in tonight, hoping to see the greatest hit of all time. Lamar Hoyt's 1-1 one, one pitch. Two and one. Rose first at bat. To short. His second at bat, a fly to left. 2 1 pitch. Popped up, and Gary Templeton will make the play. Pete Rose tonight at Riverfront Stadium in Cincinnati against Lamar Hoyt is old. You have been watching Pete Rose's third trip to the plate tonight live from Cincinnati Riverfront Stadium. He is now 0 for 3 as he goes for number 4192. We will come back for his fourth trip to the plate a little later on in the Braves game. Right now, let's go back live to Fulton County Stadium with Skip and Ernie. All right, you saw it. Pete Rose is now 0 for 3 at Riverfront. Here it's 2-0 Los Angeles. They have a runner at first, Brock, who just walked. Cabell was thrown out attempting to steal. Socia's a batter. He's going to go 0 for 3. He's sure going to louse up a lot of people. <laughs> Come on, Pete. One ball, one strike. One ball, one strike. Did he go? Yes, he did. Duncan's at a base hit in this inning. Cabell, a single in the stolen base. Landro, a single in an RBI. Cabell also with an RBI. Two nothing Dodgers, top of the first. Now the one two. Hit foul past Manny Moda, coaching at first, and he points, hit it in the big ring. There's Manny. Quite a pinch hitter in his day. And Joe Malfitano. Love to. Used to hear Dizzy Dean pronounce that name. Swinging strike. That's it, but not before the Dodgers pick up two. Atlanta coming to bat. You see the Dodgers line up out in the field behind Bobby Castillo who's been around. Castillo helped Fernando Valenzuela develop a good screwball. He's 5'10", 180, proving you don't have to be a giant to pitch in the major leagues. He is 30 years old. He's over with Minnesota plus the Dodgers last year. He'll face Milt Thompson as a leadoff batter. He hasn't started many games. Let's check it. This is his fifth start. ERA over five. But it makes no difference. Anybody thrown out there by the Dodgers in this series to this point has done something. We've talked about Honeycutt. Last night, they used a couple of young pitchers who picked up their first win and first save. Bunted. He'll never throw him out. Thompson on a beautiful bunt.
he can bunt like this, he'll be a 300 hitter for a lot of years in the major leagues. This is absolutely perfect. He deadens it. It's almost completely stopped by the time Cabell gets there, and he wisely held on. He had no chance. I mentioned the pitchers last night. Holton got his first major league win, and Powell his first save for the Dodgers. Both kids. Thompson's gone. Out of there. There's Sosha again. Bobby Wine trying to shake him up and get something going. Sends Thompson right away, and he's cut down. Now we talked about Duncan and forgot to mention this guy. That's a perfect throw. Thompson had a good jump. He just overtook him with that throw. This Sosha, he's an all-star catcher this year for my money. Here's a one-strike pitch. A little bit high, one and one. Tell you what, you talk about Carter, you talk about Pena. This guy's having as good a year as I was. Started the game at 300. The night, I should say, at 300. One ball, two strikes. Murphy on deck. The Braves are now 20 games under 500. 58 and 78. Who would have thought it in March? Pretty well hit and left. Let's watch it. Hubbard's got himself a double. He hit it over the head of Matusek, starting his second game in this twilight doubleheader. And he showed his inexperience here. He got a late start on the ball, though it was well hit. It's a double for Hubbard. Hubbard's hit the ball better. Last couple of weeks, he had four hits in St. Louis, that series. Had a home run here last night. Murphy did not look good. Hardcore Braves fans out here. These are the fans that are out here when you're in first as well as in fifth. A lot of Dodger fans in town, too. Here's an 0-1. Pretty well hit. It had a ring to it. Back toward that wall. This ball is out of here. Murphy. Be too knowledgeable to know if you could hear that ball was going to leave the ballpark. What a crack. Murphy now with 35. He had his 35th home run last year on September 25th. This is a 10th. And Perry takes inside. Let's look at the Murphy cut again. Castillo knew the second he touched it off. It's a 2 2 game. They're playing again in New York. 5 1 Mets. Delay was 53 minutes. Corner started the first game at first. Gerald Perry at 209 with a homer and 10 RBIs. Inside ball four. Now Washington. One on and two in. He 
if you see a ball go away from a left handed batter that's Castillo's screwball. Easiest way to describe a screwball is it just breaks the opposite way of a curve. Just about everybody knows the direction a curve breaks. There it is, Scroogey. And a slider breaks the same way as the same direction as a curve, but usually not as much and quicker. Washington wants the sticky rag. Same two clubs tomorrow night, 7.35, television time, and on Thursday, too. We just hope Mailer can get a few more starts this year, but running out of dates. He had a great shot to win 20 ball games. He's at 17. to Duncan the hard way first of all he made a great play stopping the ball then he threw a strike Washington hits it let's take another look going out rock right on the back he does not hit Perry very easy to do on that double play great one we go to the second 2-2 two -two. see Len Matusek running around. He hit the first pitch out of the ballpark to make it 3-2. Matusek with a homer. Here's the replay on it. First pitch from McMurtry. And it's hit deep to right. So you saw both the home run and that exciting double play turned by Brock. Because of the instant replay. Yeah. Sacks. Strike. It's Matuzic, Sacks, and Castillo here leading off the Dodger second. Incidentally, Matuzic's first home run as a Dodger. And I think we just got through talking about that. Everyone is helping. Matuzic's first homer as a Dodger. Makes it 3-2. They all get in the act. Pitch the sacks. Zavella can't make the play. He had it in his glove for a moment. It will hit McMurtry first. It'll be a base hit. Curveball. He's lucky he didn't get hit. Went in the coconut. Zavella just couldn't come up clean it. Bobby Castillo has the earmarks of a 10-9 game. Strike, 0-1. Here's an 0-1, a little bit high. Runner at first. Nobody out. I think Cincinnati went out in front of San Diego. Foul away. It's 2-2. Two -two. At Riverfront is a play in the seventh, but I'm listening to Ross Porter, and I thought I caught him say that the Reds had gone out in front by a run. Bell is at a home run, Buddy Bell, in that ball game for the two runs by the Reds. Bottom of the third, New York five, St. Louis one. Bunted foul. That is a strikeout. One down runner at first. Montreal one, Philadelphia nothing after four and a half. 
Wallach a home run Montreal. Pittsburgh two Chicago one after six and a half. They're now in the bottom of the six Detroit one Toronto nothing Morris against Doyle Alexander boy Alexander has had a great year. Strike. I believe Alexander going for his 16th win tonight. 15th. He is 14 and 8. McMurtry has a good pickoff move. Milwaukee still leading New York. 2-0. They're in the third. Whitson against Burris. We'll keep you posted all night long on those very important games. The 0-1. Low. Kansas City at California will be Lee Brad against McCaskill. That starts at 10.30 Eastern time. Sacks could go at any time. In the Baltimore win over the Red Sox, 7-5. Eddie Murray at another homer. It's 27th. Young at his 26th. Shelby is 5th. Jim Rice is 25th for the Sox, and Gedman is 15th. Ball must have been carrying at Old Fenway. Maybe the wind was blowing out. Here's a 1-1. One, 1-2. One. One Skip Terry and Ernie Johnson with you from Atlanta. They haven't announced the crowd, but looks now like it's over 10,000. Maybe 10 to 12. One, two, won't be made. Rose ought to be due up shortly, isn't it? <laughs> Rose is 0 for 3 at this point. He said he's not going to wait until the Reds come here next week. Told me that for sure. Runner going. Bouncing ball foul. So we're covering both games for you. Yes. The Braves game and the Reds game. That makes it a double head of wine and roses. roses. There are many that didn't hear that in the first game. That's I'm right. glad that you brought that back. I thought I would That's recapitulate great. here, yes. doesn't it? Sacks with a big lead. Boy, he was leaning, and McMurtry almost got it. He's safe before it was close. Two. Instead, the first. Murphy now with 235 career homers. Runner going. Foul away. Okay. I thought I'd figure that out, and I could do it by myself. Murph needs 520 homers to tie Aaron. <laughs> but he doesn't get them all tonight. <laughs> That's what makes that such an incredible record. And someone was talking about Rose's record. If you play 20 years at 200 hits, you're still short. He 200 has, hits a year for 20 years. He has more hits than Dale Murphy has at bats. Yeah. To me, that makes it incredible. Yeah. Meanwhile, Mariano Duncan may never get to swing the bat again. <laughs> <laughs> Two 
Runner going. He's going to be safe. Stolen base. Ernie, as we look at it again, let me ask you a question as a former pitcher. How can a guy allow base hits at the velocity that McMurtry has allowed in two innings and strike out three of the first five outs? That means he must have pretty good stuff, and if he's got good stuff, how can he be getting hit this hard? Putting some pitches right down the middle, possibly. Making a few good pitches. He's given up five line drives and he struck out three men. It's hard to figure. Cabell's a batter. Duncan doesn't strike out that often. Cabell knocked in a run the first time up and he stole a base. One ball, two strikes. Yes, 200 hits a year for 20 years. That's 4,000. Rose, when he gets his next hit, will have 192 more than that, and he's going to keep on playing. There's a sidearm fastball. McMurtry at times will drop down there and Try to jam the hitter. Well, let's see. What other records won't be broken? I never thought Ruth's record would be broken. Or Cobb's. What about Gehrig's consecutive games? No, I don't see how they can break that. Oh, boy, oh, boy. I don't think anyone's hurt. I saw Budweiser go one way. That's what saves somebody from getting hurt. Brother. The guy got his Budweiser smoked, boy. Now there's a salesman. The vendor right back down there. There is a salesman. Take two this time, pal. You never know. <laughs> Zavella. That'll do it, but they pick up a run on Matusek Homer. We go to the bottom of the second inning, down by a run. We're going to the bottom of the second. Youngster can join the Braves and Dental Health Services in promoting good dental health. As a part of the program, youngsters may receive free dental health screenings through September 14th at the Dental Health Services location. They can also enter the brightest smile in Atlanta contest. Winners receive prizes, including a trip to Disney World. I want to remind the kids that this Saturday, youngsters 14 and under, on back to school day, will receive a three ring binder notebook if you've got a reserve seat ticket. There's a bounce at the first. That's one down. And then fan appreciation night is Saturday, September 28th. A lot of prizes, including a 1985 Chevrolet. Cerrone's a batter. Zavella's on deck. We're playing in the bottom of the second inning. Oh, we're in the second game. In the second game. First game took about two hours and 35 minutes. Here's a one off. Look like a screwball to a right-handed batter. Some will do that. Popped him up. Sacks. Two away for Paul Zavella. Starting at shortstop in the second game. Two 
Clear away, nobody on. Other records, Joe DiMaggio's hitting streak, 56, and Hack Wilson knocked in 190 plus runs one year. I don't know if they'll ever say so what. If they let Rick Camp play every day, he might take a run at DiMaggio's. <laughs> well, my feeling on records in the future is the salaries stay the way they are. Players aren't going to have to play that long to have enough money to just take life easy. There's a fly ball along the line that might fall and does base hit. Yeah, that's one way to look at it. Any of the, the other side of that coin is you take a guy like Rose or any player of today who comes into the game at a young age with the advances in medical science and sports training, which has really turned into a profession and used to just be a hard bitten old guy with a bottle of liniment and a bottle of whiskey and he rub it on you and say go to work. If a guy takes care of himself and wants to he can play I think longer now than he could back in the 20s. Swing and miss I think you're right from that viewpoint. But from the other side of the coin is how many dollars do you need yeah, and how right. long is your wife might say uh, look we've got a couple of million dollars in the bank. I don't think you have to play when we're when you're 40 or 38. Well, the wild pitch. Answer that is simple. Divorce her, give her half the money, and keep playing. <laughs> I know one thing's going to happen. They'll probably lose a lot of super players who won't want to stay in baseball mm -hmm. as coaches and in the front office, as managers or any part of the game as they come back to a salary that's so much lower. Paul Richards said it a long time ago. He said a superstar at that time it was $75,000. Can't understand how a scout can live on $12,000. He didn't want to be a scout. Well, I think well, all of us know that. Whatever you make, that's yeah. the, your level of living. Yeah. ball foul. I can use Dale Murphy as an, one example. Uh, he might prove me wrong, but I don't see Dale Murphy playing after he's 35 years old. Well, he's, yeah, you know, he's a devout Mormon. And yeah. I'm talking to him on a plane uh, from Pittsburgh to St. Louis. He and Nancy thinking about perhaps, perhaps going on a husband-wife mission mm -hmm. once their kids are old enough yeah. and his playing days are over. So he's got other plans. Yeah. That is a strikeout. Murphy could play at least 40, but I think there's certain players that get up to around 35, 36. Let's go back to Cincinnati rather than the commercial, see how Pete Rose is making it. For John Fricky live from the TBS studios, we are watching Pete Rose will be up at the next at bat. He is on deck right now. Rose is 0 for 3. He has flied out three times this evening. In his first appearance in the first inning, he popped a short. In his second appearance, he hit the first pitch into left for a fly out. In his third appearance, he again popped a short. This is Eddie Milner laying down the bond against 21-year-old pitcher Lance McCullers. He's a rookie. So the Reds, here's the situation. Max Venable, pitch hit with a single to lead off the inning. He is now at second base. We are in the bottom of the eighth inning with one out. The Padres lead the game 3-2, to two, and Rose is coming to the plate for his fourth at bat. Rose, as I mentioned, 0 for 3. The place is absolutely jam-packed. We're going to go to Ken Wilson and Joe Morgan for the play-by-play -play in Cincinnati. He wants it to be an important hit in a key ball game. And now the Reds need a base hit to tie the ball game. So you've got a very important situation here, and this is what Pete wants. Dick Williams apparently is going to stick with a 21 year old rookie Lance McCullers one out eighth inning ball one I wonder if Lance McCullers is as nervous as most of the people here in the stadium I'm sure he is 
Rose is ready. McCullers, 1-0 pitch, driven in the gap in left center, and there to make the catch is Martinez. Venable back to second. There are two outs, and Pete Rose... Well, Pete over. Rose fails in his fourth attempt. He's had two pop-outs and two line-outs, and that was as close as he's come all night to getting 41-92. Now, we are in the bottom of the eighth. Should the Reds tie the game and go to extra innings, we will come back and go live to Riverfront Stadium if Pete Rose gets another chance to hit this evening. Right now, let's go back to Atlanta Fulton County Stadium with Skip and Earl. Landrell leads it off. Mike Faraday with a big group out tonight having a big party. They're taking advantage of their super box in center field. <laughs> this is Landro hitting the foul pass first. Well, Rose 0 for 4. Might not make it up again tonight. There's the super box right there in center field. They were constructed this summer. The 0 2 is high. Landro with a single and an RBI caught stealing in the first. And the one two won't be made. He steps out. Thought for a moment Rose had one. He hit it hard in left center field, but it hung up for the out. Boy, will he be glad when that hit comes. Two and two. Marge Shot might want it to last <laughs> a week. <laughs> Probably a stead. Well, it is a standing room only today. <laughs> Bouncing ball first. Perry. One down. Hank Aaron had 3,771 hits in fourth place. Stan Musio, 3,630 hits. Playing in the top of the third. Just tuned us in. The Dodgers got two in the first, one in the second. Atlanta, two in the first on Murphy's 35th home run of the year. Matusek is homered for Los Angeles. Hard hit ball toward the hole out of the reach of Zavella in the left field. Marsha with a single. They have a half dozen. Okay, at Milwaukee, Pasqua home run in the fourth. His ninth. Currently, the score is Milwaukee two, New York one. And that was the only scoring they did. They go to the bottom of the fourth at Milwaukee. Yankees losing 2 1. Down low. Rock walked in the first inning. One zero, -oh. just missed. Rock's best year, RBI wise, I think he had around sixty a couple of years ago. No. In '83, Brock had sixty-six RBI. He's got a shot at that. Three and a half weeks left. Ball four high. That moves Marshall to second, put Brock at first. Craig McMurtry has struggled all night. He has two on and one out. Perez in the first game was hammered in one and two thirds innings, giving up five hits and five runs. Here's Sosha. He's a good double play man if you can get him to hit one at somebody. He hasn't done it often this year. 0 and 1. Right now he's at 299. That batting average might be one of the best for catchers in the National League. 299. And now Fatano is giving all kinds of signs. You can see Sosha looking down. Here's an 0-1. Pop foul. 0-2. Oh 
We did a little segment with Bobby Dews on signs of the third base coach. There's so many. You can give all kinds of decoys and there's nothing on because the coach isn't even looking at you. Look at old Joey. Pretty good infielder himself in the major leagues for several years. Now an 0-2. A little bit high. None and two. Charlie Grimm, the late Charlie Grimm, said, keep it simple. He used to coach third. He said, if you can't see my thumb, bunt. I mean, I like those kind of things. You couldn't miss one. And the one, two. Boy, that just missed. Two and two. Did you ever hear the Boudreaux story? Which one? Not when, he, when he wiped his and face. Jack Quinlan? No, when he wiped oh. his face with a handkerchief, it was steel. And it worked fine for about a week till he got a cold. <laughs> <laughs> that guy's stealing with the bases loaded. One of the great cassettes of all time was the late Jack Quinlan and Lou Boudreau when they did the Cubs game. The pantyhose? They had a, they had a, a pantyhose or some feminine feminine garment and they had to read it live and they got the giggles and it's one of the funniest you'll ever hear in your life. They're not professional like we are. <laughs> Propped him up. Runners were going. It was 3-2. One out. Now it's two outs. Thompson with the catch. Matusek homered first time up. His first homer as a Dodger. He'll bat with runners at first and second. A pitch a little bit low bottom of the third year skip okay Ernie thank you Milt beat out a bunt on the third baseline his first time and it was a beauty right under his chinny chin chin one ball no strengths both pitchers after a shaky first inning have settled down a bit but it's still early we're in the bottom of the third Dodgers won the first one ten to one Through there, good line fastball, two and one. Three, six, and oh for Los Angeles, two, four, and one for Atlanta at this juncture. Kenny Landro draws a beat on it in center field, one away. Thompson is retired. Glenn Hubbard, the battery, doubled over the head of Len Matuzek his first time. Dale Murphy has a two run homer for Atlanta, his 35th, and now his 95 RBIs. 36 is his home run high for a major league season. He's done that three times. One ball, no strikes. Socia couldn't control it. Don't forget, Saturday we lay a triple header on you. Baylor at Georgia. College football at noon Eastern time. Braves Giants baseball at 5.05. Pittsburgh and Ohio State football at 8 o'clock. Two and one to the hub. What if we go extra innings? You Shouldn't have I have said that? Fine with me. There are 8 million producers around who will <laughs> give you 8 million different opinions as to what we should do. Back this way. 46, 46 minutes. They didn't give themselves a whole lot of time, did they? Well. It's not my job.
should get more this year. Then that number is one away now. Hubbard hooks as a walk. The second surrendered by Castillo, who has walked one, who has struck out one. And here's Murph again. Gerald Perry moves on deck. Rowing inside, one ball, no strikes. Milwaukee three, the Yankees one. Toronto has tied Detroit after six, one one. Kansas City and California, half hour away from getting started. Three and zero, oh, and I would turn him loose. I'm sure he will. If he likes it, well, you can really guess on this pitch if he has a green light. I want it right there, fastball, not too high, not too low. Curveball, just missed, and he walked it. So two walks in a row after one out. Castillo is skating on some thin ice here. Gerald Perry is the batter. And they begin to stir in the Dodger bullpen. And Lasorda in the middle of your picture, hiding behind the ring. Number 48 there is Dennis Powell who got the save last night. Looks like he's going to go to work. Uh, Moultrie, Georgia. Perry walked his first time. Oh, he had a home run swing, but he missed the curveball. Oh, and one. the Braves uh, do not give up on Gerald Perry. I still think he's going to hit in the major leagues. He's only 25 years old. The 0-2 pitch will not be made. Toronto has scored a run in the bottom of the seventh. They lead Detroit 2-1 after seven. Dennis Powell gets ready. I think he'll hit two, Ernie, but the Braves really have a problem. They have a decision to make. If they're married to Horner at first base, Struck him out. He didn't look good on that at bat. He foul tipped into the strikeout. That was the screwball that he failed to get. Oh, I know that. They, uh, if Horner stays at first, a Perry could be a backup, I guess. But uh, that's his position. And I get the feeling that he might be one of those players that if you let him go, he goes to another team and all of a sudden haunts you. Starts to hit like he did in the minor leagues. He's not an old guy. Well, I don't know that the uh, so we don't know who's going to be here next year. I don't know if the Braves are married to the fact that Bob Horner is their first baseman forever. He's still played a lot more third than he's played first. Mm -hmm. I think it would be up to Horner if uh, the manager, whoever the manager may be, went to him and said, "I think." We'd like to go back to this combination. You back to third and someone else at first. I think Horner would say, well, okay. But I, I know that he loves, I think he likes to play first yeah. better than third. And I think you're right. That's probably the way it is today. Boy, that's a little different than the old days. You didn't ask anybody. Yeah. You go there. You missed high and tight with a fastball. It's one and one. Hubbard leads from second, the Murph from first. Two on, two out. And a 
one one pitch to Washington who was robbed of a hit by Brock his first time. Missed inside two and one. But then when you start talking about trades and deals and the most of the time other teams bring up some of your young players they mm -hmm. see something maybe that you don't see in the player and they say well we'll trade uh, so and so and you just give me let me parry and comments a couple guys like that three and one to Washington or they'll see a problem like yeah. being stacked up at a position like mm -hmm. the Braves would be at first base and that doesn't even count Chris Chambliss who in the latter parts of the season has shown signs of life and Chris has made this statement on a pregame radio show that uh, at one time he's he wanted to play every day, but now he's reached a point where I feel that if he can get some playing time in, that he would accept a backup role. Let's see what happens on the 3-1 to Washington. Hot shot, base hit, we got a tie game. Murphy heads for third. Hubbard will score standing up. Waddell drives in. The tying run. It's 3-3. RBI number 33 for Washington. And Ken Obergfell will be the batter. Let's see if Tom Lasorda makes a move. Apparently not. Obi bounced to Brack his first time. Low and away, one ball, no strikes. I'll bet it's tough pitching on a team that is managed by an ex-pitcher. Like Joe Torre used to say, he was really hard on his catchers because that had been his position. Especially those two positions. If you think. were an outstanding pitcher yourself, say you were a Bob Feller, someone like that, you might feel that, why can't they do it? I did it. Yeah. Two balls and a strike. But even Lasorda was a good enough pitcher that he, and he wasn't an overpowering guy, but he knew how to pitch. He got away with a pitch there, breaking ball up. Obergfell had a home run cut, but he fouled it back. So it's two and two. Murphy 90 feet away with a go ahead run. Washington at first, we're in the bottom of the third. See if it stays in play. Cabell at the dugout wanted to slide and make the catch, but could not. It stays. Two balls, two strikes. Rodgers have six hits, Braves have five. Atlanta has committed the game's only error. Claudel back easily again. Two, the pitch was low. It hit the bat. Went foul. It's still two and two. Watched uh, national TV last night, and they had uh, Ty Cobb's son on television talking about Rose breaking Ty Cobb's record. He brought out one point. That's going to make the seats as well. They both played about the same number of years, but he brought out the point that uh, when his dad played. It was 154 game schedule. So you multiply those 10 games by 20 years. We're talking about Rose being in 200 more games. But we've been up and down that road so many yeah. times with Hank Aaron and Bay Ruth that I think that they were talking about whether it should be an asterisk. And Howard Cosell was also on the on the show. And uh, there shouldn't be. It should. It's a 
it's a record and and I think you're really splitting hairs when you start thinking about the difference in years and different kinds of pitchers and things of this nature you've got to you can argue up and down about there weren't as many major league pitchers there weren't as many good relief pitchers and things like that but then and Cobb batted against all kinds of dirt balls spit balls and his artificial turf so I think you just got to th throw those out and give Rose all the credit needed the bases are loaded for Sarone Castillo has walked three in the inning four on the night You get the feeling Tommy would like to go out with the hook, but he's got a left-hander ready in the bullpen and a right-hand hitter up there. Well, I don't think there's any doubt that Ty Cobb was the outstanding hitter as far as all-around player of, of, of his yeah. era. Sure, he was an he was all-around better ball player than Pete Rose, but you have to give Rose credit for what he's done. And there'll be first the pitch to Cerrone as a strike. There'll be no celebration in Cincinnati tonight. The Padres won the game three to two. I guess Marge Shad will celebrate. That means probably another sellout yes, tomorrow. She's kind of hoping for about a week, maybe. <laughs> that should end the inning unless we get a bad hop. We almost did, but the inning is over. But the Braves tie it on the Washington hit, the only base hit of the inning. It played at a run. There were no errors. Three men were left, and we've played three, and it's 3-3. Three, three. We go to the fourth inning here. Steve Sachs will lead it off. Looks like Stu Peterson may pinch hit next for Castillo. Yankees got a couple of runs. They're still batting in the fifth, and they're now tied with Milwaukee 3-3. Three, three. Still batting on top of the fifth, and the Cardinals pick up another run. It's 5-2, bottom of the fifth, New York. Sacks single stole a base his first time. The Reds and the Padres doing just what Tommy Lasorda wants them to do, chop each other up. Cincinnati won last night, San Diego won tonight. And the Dodgers, meanwhile, winning. 2-0, the count on Sex. Now it's two and one. Honus <laughs> Wagner, by the way, held the record prior to Ty Cobb. That ball is pretty well hit in left field. Thompson's gone about as far as he can go. Did he catch that ball? Yes, he did. What a play. Mel Thompson took a triple away from Steve Sachs as he sprinted into deep left center. There is no substitute for speed. Look at this beautiful catch. Then the slide to, re to prevent going into the fence. Just got it. What a play by Thompson. He's done everything right since being brought up from Richmond. Batting over 300, playing well in the field. Well, he's going to be reckoned with next year. Here's Stu Peterson is 0 for 1. One ball, no strengths. This kid is out of Southern Cal. From Stanford, California. He's a backgammon and domino player, Ernie. What do you think about that? I know he's a Studesvensk. That's big Swede. That's easy for you to say. <laughs> Two and one, the count. <laughs> Svenska Poik. Not too many Swedes playing baseball. Tennis is their game. Yes, Boy. it is. Nice, convenient hop. Two down. Peterson, by the way, had hit 328 at Albuquerque this year. 
And here's Mariano Duncan, who's one for two after driving in five runs in the first game. I don't want to take anything away from the Swede, but Vin Scully said, does anyone ever hit under 300 at Albuquerque? Yeah. All the credentials came up, all the stats, and they've had some super players come out of Albuquerque, but it seemed like everybody hits 330. Of course, the ball travels pretty well. Had to skip the rope to get out of the way. One ball, no strikes. Vin Scully is their announcer. Sometimes. Yes. Vin's got the night off tonight. Wasn't here last night. That's because they're not televising. Obergfell has no hope. Catch by a fan down below. You know, I think athletes are bigger and better than ever. And uh, a lot of old timers won't agree with me, but I just think all the track records of years ago have been broken. Whether you're playing basketball, football, or baseball, the athletes are bigger and better than ever. And uh, I don't think enough is discussed about the fact that Integration is one of the things that made this possible. Jackie Robinson broke the, the color line in baseball. Boy. Duncan is dunked, and the inning is over. Nothing going in the fourth. We go to the bottom half, and we're knotted up. 3-3. Three, three. Dennis Powell on the pitch. He picked up a major league save last night. Powell out of Moultrie, Georgia. Was 9-0 at Albuquerque this year before coming to the big club. He'll face the lower end of the Atlanta order. Zuvella, McMurtry, and then Mill Thompson. Ernie Johnson, Skip Carey with you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Those amazing New York Yankees. Hassey, a three-run homer. In the fifth, and they lead Milwaukee 6-3. One and one, the count. The barking vendor has put in an appearance here tonight. Let's see what he's selling. Last night you said hot dogs, and it turned out to be beer. You might have heard me. Gone to the Sunnylands. Two and one. Ernie's about to fall out of the booth here. And Can't press find him. him. Can hear him. <laughs> well hit. Base hit Zavella. He's two out of two. And that's the way the Atlanta fourth has started. And that's the way Dennis Powell is greeted. Andrew Scott, Tommy Mixon found this guy. He pitched for the semi-pro Al Albany Hawks and won 20 straight for them. That would tend to catch your attention. Yes. Here he comes. McMurtry tries to bump on foul into the seats. Still selling beer. Budweiser. You know how to make Budweiser. No. You send him to school. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so sorry. Socia will throw to first. Better hurry. Close play. 2-4 sacrifice. And Mel Thompson is the matter. Nice, but McMurtry always runs hard to first base. And he made it close. He's in the air. Another thing you like about Socia, though, is you can see him calling for that ball when it was still up in the air. I'll take care of this. That way, no collisions, no miscommunications. 0 oh, and 1 is the count.
Zavella at second, one away. I wonder what prompted the barking vendor to begin barking. What do you think, Ern? Give me a little time on that one, will you? Sure. That's one thing we got plenty of tonight, baby. <laughs> one and two is the count of times. What prompted the vendor to become a barker? Take your time. Yeah. I don't know the answer. I always defer to my yeah. elders on these key <laughs> points. Didn't miss by much. It's two and two. Two balls, two strikes. I'll have the answer tomorrow night at 7.35. Shame we don't do the open weekend. We do. We open tomorrow night. No, we just opened this game. We did? Yeah. <laughs> I should remember, should that? <laughs> it was only a couple of hours ago. <laughs> two balls, two strikes. We yeah. do anything not to wear a tie. Yeah. No, we, no we, we opened the second game. We opened the second game here about 15 minutes before it started, sure, I you recall. <laughs> I recall. Two balls, two strikes, the count on Thompson. A little broken bat. It's going to fall. Base hit, but Zavella stays at second. He was fearful. Cabello would catch it. And that's not bad base running on his part. He couldn't be sure. So Thompson is two out of three, and Powell is in trouble. And Hubbard has doubled, walked, and scored twice. Will be the batter for Atlanta, and Dale Murphy moves on deck. A broken bat single. Thompson now with two hits and three tries. Good speed on the bases for Atlanta. Strike to Hubbard. Glenn at 229 on the year. Five homers, 35 runs driven home. Wow, oh, this is low and away. in behind the runners and Zavella scrambling back. The 1-1. One, one. Pretty well hit right center field. Landro on the move. So is Marshall. Who wants it? Landro. Zavella tags and scampers over to third. And they're on the corners from Earth with two up. Hubbard put a charge in that to the off field, but not quite enough. Murph is homered with a man aboard, and he has walked. He's at 292 on the year in the first game. He was one for three. All kinds of meetings with Murphy at the plate. Of course, Powell hasn't faced him that much. He might have faced him last night. He did. He got a base hit off Powell last night. Into left field. And now Fatano and Lasorda study the action. He might be the new general manager, the next general manager of the Dodgers when Al Campanis decides to retire. Lasorda, yeah, I've heard that. I've heard that talk often. Campanis, in his late 60s, is here with the ball club, but there's talk that when he decides to retire, that Lasorda might be the new GM. Of course, we love to spread all these lovely rumors anyway. And that's all they are. Yes. Heard rumors that then somebody like Chuck Tanner might become the Dodger manager. Or Joe Torrey's name. Or Joe Torrey was. Joe Amalfa yeah. was a candidate, I yeah. would think. If any of this happened. Yeah. 
I might add, this has been our worst year predicting and managing. And being official scorers. Official scorers. Man. It gives us several things to work on during the winter months. 2-0 and oh is the count to Murphy. Swing. It's okay with me. Last time they threw him a curveball on a 3 0. I don't think they mind if they walk him here with the left hand hitters coming up. Boy, oh, strength against strength, yeah. and the youngster won that time. 3 and 1. Good low fastball. The middle, he beat the ship. A run is in. Thompson races for third. Landro's throw. He is safe. Murphy drives in his 96th run, and the Braves have the lead. They should have gone ahead and walked it. Here's Gerald Perry. We got to hit him hard to get it through the shift. Sachs is way over. The pitcher just missed it. There's Sachs. On the third base side of second. Runners on the corners, it's 4 3. And Gerald Perry will try to add to that margin. Breaking ball for a strike, 0 and 1. It's even now a ball and a strike. Line score four, eight, and one for Atlanta, three, six, and oh for the Dodgers. Breaking ball is high. Two and one. Powell just 22 years old. He's got some. You have an earned run average of 2.74 at Albuquerque. We just talked about how good the hitting is. That's there. right. He must be a pretty good pitcher. Ball carries there. They score a lot of runs. So that's a tremendous ERA. It's 2-2 two -two to Perry. And that's that. But the Braves pick up the go-ahead run. They do it on three hits, and they leave two runners, and we've played four. And Atlanta enjoys a 4-3 lead in game two of the doubleheader. We go to the fifth inning. Cabell, Landro, and Marshall will bat against Craig McMurtry. Braves fan Dick Fontaine looking in tonight never misses a Braves telecast. Cabell drove in a run singled and later scored in the first and he hits that one over the head of Ken Obergfell. He takes a wide turn but wisely hangs on the throw is over the head of Hubbard but no harm done. And the tying run is quickly on McMurtry. Surrenders his seventh hit. He's walked two and he's thrown 83 pitches. We're in the fifth inning. The professor came over with that total for us, and the Atlanta bullpen will go to work. Zane Smith will get up and throw. Landro. Could see him trying to take advantage of the fact that Perry has to hold the runner on and pull the ball toward right field. There's Zane getting ready. Uh, 
outside. It's one and one. Toronto won their game. They beat Detroit 2 1. After five, the Yankees lead Milwaukee 6 4. Low and away again. Two balls and a strike. Fans are trying to get the wave started here. Very feeble when you don't stand up. You just raise your hands. Not that's too the, effective. That's the Bob Wessler version of the whip. <laughs> Bob popularized that here in Atlanta and I'm sure around the country. He's probably got the wave going in Russia. Two balls and a strike for Cobb. He took advantage of it, pulled it through the hole into right field. Cabell races toward third. He goes in head first for no good purpose. And they're knocking at the door again, folks. First and third, nobody out. And that's another reason the Dodgers are a good team. You get up on them, boy, they come right back at you. Just out of the reach of Hubbard, putting runners first and third. Cabell making the turn, no problem. The more I watch Landro play, the more I like it. He does the little things. Like that time, he just made up his mind he was going to pull the ball to the right side because the percentages were in his favor. A little hole on that side as Perry's holding the runner. And the first baseman does jump off, but you've got to realize that he's fairly close to home plate when he jumps off four or five feet when the pitch is made. So it's tough. So Mike Marshall stands in. Fastball in on him. One ball, no strikes. McMurtry has four strikeouts. But he's allowed eight hits. And we're in the fifth. Landro back easily. Set left field tie game. Landro will stop at second. Three hits in a row here off McMurtry. And nine on the night. And Marshall drives in. Yet another run. And here comes Bobby Wine. As the left hand hitting Greg Brock comes to the plate, it's almost certain that he'll make a change. He wants Zane to throw a few more. That's why he's walking as slowly as he is toward the mound. By the way, Bobby and Ted Turner met this morning. No contract offered or anything, but Ted made the statement to Bobby, why I just really want to get to know you. Because when you're the on the coaching staff, you don't do much talking. I and mean, it's the manager who represents the on the field people. And they had what Ted isn't here tonight. Bobby described it as a very good and frank and forthright discussion. They will make the change here. McMurtry is history for the night, and Zane Smith will come in out of the Atlanta bullpen. We'll be back to tell you how he does right after this. Zane Smith takes his warm-up tosses here. It's been a funny year for Smith. He started out in the bullpen, started very well, then ran into some bullpen problems. And then they made him a starter, and he pitched super. Then he had back surgery, and now he's come back to the bullpen again. He's 6-8 and eight overall with a 3.62 earned run effort. And he's pitched 117 big league innings this year. Greg Brock bats with runners at first and second. Nobody out. It's a tie game. Will he bunt? Obergfell sort of thinks so, but he's not sure. He will. Or at least he started to. He took a strike. It's 0-1. There's a sequence of signs from Joe Malfitano. That one missed outside, a breaking ball, one and one. That time, Perry charged very hard from first. Oberfell stayed home at third. A 
He swung away and fouled it off. It's one and two. A ball and two strikes. I told him never to call me here. Two and two. Can we tell that story about Bruce Froman? No. Okay. And it's nothing bad. Now you've got everybody thinking that. I thought I saw it in a paper, something about it. Guess not. Just missed three and two. Yeah, we can tell it, I guess. We got to now. People oh, have... I think it's a cute story. I think it's great. Got him with a fastball. Brock is out of there. There's a big strike up. And here's Mike Sosha. Breaking ball strikeout. Now Bruce was in a restaurant, I think it was in Cincinnati, and some younger fan got on him about being heavy. He said, well, let's go race. 100 yards. Then he beat him. The guy was 20 <laughs> years younger and 30 pounds lighter. <laughs> That's a good story. Double play ball. Four, six. The inning is over. So Zane Smith gets it done in a hurry and gets McMurtry off the hook. Though the Dodgers rally to tie it with a run on three hits and they leave a banner. Pete Van Weren and John Sterling back to join you now. We'll go to the bottom of the fifth, all tied 4-4. We're just about set to go to the bottom of the fifth here in hot Atlanta. It's the second game of the doubleheader. The Dodgers won the opener 10-1. This game is tied at 4-4-9-0 four, four, oh for L.A. And 4-8-1 for the Braves. That's the second Dodger pitcher of this second game, Dennis Powell, who relieved Bobby Castillo. Braves relieved Craig McMurtry last inning with Zane Smith to pitch out of the difficulties McMurtry had begun. Here's Claudel Washington leading off for the Braves and they in the bottom of the fifth. Along with Pete Van Weeren, John Sterling with you from Atlanta on the Supa station. Powell misses outside, ball one. Boy, if Castillo and McMurtry got paid by the pitch, they would be very rich men at the end of this game. There are a lot of pitches thrown. Oh, nice stop by Duncan, and he throws him out. That kid has great range. He's just learning the position, and he is going to become an outstanding fielding shortstop in years to come. Very young guy as well. He is making the plays. Pretty hard place to learn to play shortstop, too, in the major leagues. He was a second baseman at the beginning of the year. Good range to his left, good arm. Made that play look easy, and it wasn't. Oh, one away in the bottom of the fifth, and here is Ob. He fouls it off. The Dodgers have beaten the Braves seven straight times. This was a 3-3 series. The Dodgers won here the night before the strike, then the strike, and the Braves lost four straight out in L.A. right after the strike, and two straight in this series. For those who have been involved in other pursuits tonight and you have a right oh he takes it outside one and two Pete Rose did not get a hit he was over for four tonight the Padres beat the Reds three to two so they'll fill Riverfront up tomorrow night and see if Rose can get the record tomorrow Duncan <laughs> amazing boy if that isn't baseball and maybe all of life in one way or t'other. Duncan makes an exceptional play and then allows an easy ground ball to go right through the wickets. Even he can't help but smile about it. He knows he made a good play in the play before that. This one, the most routine kind of a ground ball you could possibly have. Right to you. And right between the legs. 
That's Los Angeles first error of the second game so the totals are almost identical. Here's Rick Saron with Obi at first base and one out. That's going to be double play. Nice scoop by Brock on the other end. Obi did his job. He took sacks out but Brock scooped it up and we had a one four three double play to end the bottom of the fifth end of five. The Braves and Dodgers are tied at four. Top of the sixth there in Atlanta. Ball game tied at four. Four nine and one for L.A. Four eight and one for the Braves. Tommy Lasorda will go to his amply stocked bench to begin the top of the sixth. Len Matuzak was due. He's a lefty hitter. That's Candy Maldonado who will come out and pinch hit for Matuzak and probably go to left field. Tom Lasorda has, I think, 15 outfielders on the bench. He can he can make all kinds of changes, and he did make them all last night, as a matter of fact. Here is Candy. Takes the fastball, high ball one. Maldonado hitting a 2-0-3. He's been up 172 times, five homers, 12 RBIs. He has not hit the way I think Los Angeles thought he would. There's a chopper cut off by Obi to make the play. That's a nice play, one away. Obert fell with those sure hands over at third base. Anything he gets to, he generally makes the play on. He has a very accurate throwing arm. One away, we'll try to check some scores for you, and then, of course, we'll have the red man in a couple of innings. A lot of big, quote-unquote, big games going on. Games really do affect the divisional pennant races. Los Angeles won the first of two here, and the Padres beat the Reds, so the Dodgers in position to take a nine-and-a-half game lead if they win the second game. Steve Sachs takes it down low ball one. The Cardinals scored in the first. The Mets came back with five on a grand slam home run by Howard Johnson. The big blow. Then they had a rain delay and now the Cardinals are really starting to creep up. They scored a run in the fifth and two in the seventh. They go to the bottom of the seventh in New York. The Mets lead it 5-4. That's for the divisional lead. They're in a flat footed tie right now. And the first of a three game series at Shea Stadium. Fouled off. They go to the bottom of the 10th in Philadelphia. The Phils in Montreal tied at two. Rick Rushell did it again. He beat Chicago 2-1. to one. Rushell having a phenomenal year. Six straight complete games. His record 12-7. and seven. And if you don't think the six straight complete games is something, the Braves as a team all year have seven. Five by Rick Mailer. That should be easy for C-Dub in two ways. Rick Russell's comeback player of the year. At least in my book he is. Houston leads San Francisco 4-1 at the end of eight. In the American League, Baltimore beat Boston the first to 2 7 five. Second game, Red Sox lead at 2 nothing and a 6 and a half. In the big games, Toronto defeated Detroit 2-1. They lead the Yanks by game and a half going into tonight. The Yankees were down 3-1 going to the sixth. There is a ground ball to second. We'll finish this in the bottom half. And Powell is thrown out. Well, Zane Smith has been brilliant in relief and at the end of five and a half innings of play, we're tied at four. Candy Maldonado, excuse me, let me say that again. This time, John, put your teeth in the right way. Candy Maldonado remains in the game and plays left field. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the question at the stadium a few innings ago, who held the record of most hits in a career before Ty Cobb? We answered Cap Anson. We were wrong. I agreed. I know, but we were wrong. We were wrong. And you know what? It's so easy to figure it out when you know the answer. Mm -hmm. A guy who played a little before Cobb and was a flat-out Hall of Famer at shortstop, Hannes Wagner. You know what I don't know, Pete? Maybe you do. Who held the home run record before Babe Ruth? Hmm, career home runs. Runs. And I have no idea. All of a sudden, the truck is very, very quiet. Well, <laughs> if we go to the bottom of the six, Paul Zuvella leads off. I'm sure we're going to get the answer from someone in our audience, and I hope so. Zoo is two for two. 
And he takes it down low, ball one. We're in the bottom of the six. We're tied at four. Second game with the doubleheader. The Dodgers won the first game 10 to 1 and have beaten the Braves 7 straight. That's going to be a base hit. That's the Bermuda Triangle down there at third base. If you hit the ball on the ground anywhere near third, that's going to kangaroo up. We must have seen five hits like that in the past three games. Been a lot of them. It's very hard on that left side of the field. Anything hit down that way has taken that big high bounce. Most of them have gone over the head and over the glove, both of the third baseman. Cabell got to that one but had no play. So Paul Zuvella having his best night in the major leagues. He's three for three. And here in a flat out bunt situation is Zane Smith. Zuvella just average speed. Maybe a little bit better than average at first. The pitch almost hit Smith. Well they want to fire the high fastball but not at Zane Smith. And now Bobby Dews will come down from the third base coaching box to talk it over with Zane. And that pitch came very close. They have played seven in New York now and. The Mets lead the Cardinals 5-4. Other games we didn't get to in the American League. The Yankees now lead Milwaukee 10-4 at the end of five and a half. They scored five in the fifth and four in the sixth. Zane Bunce. It's a good one. He's going to beat it out. No, he just got it. For a moment, indecision between Brock and Powell. Who would pick it up? He was out. Fans are booing, but they just beat him by a step. For a moment, looked like Zane would get that. It's a very good recovery by the pitcher. He had that ball go by him. Brock was turning the other way, and Powell still somehow recovered and threw on to first just ahead of Zane Smith, who runs quite well. It's a good play by Powell. Well, the sacrifice works 1-4. You ever heard of, I know you have, but would you think it was Gabby Kravitz? I guess it probably was, but I'll bet you Babe Ruth broke that about his second year up. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Good for you. <laughs> I think I heard Steve Allen use that as a double talk word once, Gabby Kravitz. 1-0 on Milt Thompson. Thompson having a good game. He made that great catch, and he's 2-3 for three in the batter's box. Hitting at 317. He has done a lot right since being called up. And the count 2 0. To see Powell try to curve Mill Thompson, he will have a little bit of a problem, especially from a left handed curveball, but he does everything else okay. Zavella carrying the tie breaking run at second base with one out, bottom of the sixth. Sachs will make the play, and Zoo moves over to third. In the other games we didn't get to, the White Sox lead Minnesota 4-2 at the end of seven. And the other games, all on the West Coast, Cleveland at Seattle, Kansas City at California, and Texas at Oakland. Glenn Hubbard has doubled and walked and flied out. This is the guy Powell wants because Mr. Murph is on deck. Down low to the hub. 1-0. Both teams, four runs, nine hits, and one error. Pete Van Weer and John Sterling with you from Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. Our director is Thomas Smith. Hit to right center. Marshall makes the catch, and that will end the inning. No runs on a hit. The Braves strand one. At the end of six, we're tied at four. We go to the top of the seventh in Atlanta. Ball game tied at four. As we said, the total is identical. Four, nine, and one for both squads. L.A. won the opener 10 to one. Bray is trying to break this seven-game losing streak in the hands of Los Angeles. We we'll go to the seventh. Zane Smith in relief of Craig McMurtry has pitched beautifully in relief. Dennis Powell in relief of Bobby Castillo has pitched very well as, as well. Here's Mariano Duncan to lead off for the Dodgers. To tell you about it, here's Pete. Thank you, John. Duncan one for three after a five RBI performance in the first game. Now the 1 0 over at the knees, 1 and 1.
Here's the 1 1 delivery. Fouled off plate umpire Bob Davidson. One ball, two strikes, and Duncan. Now the 1 2 offering on the way. And the breaking ball missed downstairs, 2 and 2. Once Bobby Wine determines just how long Rick Mailer is going to be out, he'll have to determine who's going to take Rick's spot in the rotation. Might be McMurtry, it might be Zane Smith. They also might see Steve Shields start a game somewhere down the line this month. The Braves want to take a long look at some of their young pitchers in this final month, trying to get a little bit of a feel for what they need for next year. That's the first walk issued by Zane Smith. Walk number three off Atlanta pitching. And Enos Cabell, the batter, he's two out of three with a pair of singles. Drove in a run in the first. Dodgers could be doing anything here. Cabell might be bunting, Duncan might be running. The throw goes to first, and that time, Cabell tipped off Bunt. He started the square. We'll see if they do it again. He is squaring and taking a strike going one. Most of those signs mean nothing. One of them might have meant something. Is Cabell taking a second look? The throw goes to first by Smith and back safely is Duncan. Here's the 0-1. Cabell was not squaring on that pitch. Took a fastball low. 1-1 one one account. And again, he'll check with third base coach Joey Amalfitano. Four-four 4 game. Top half of the seventh inning. Second game of a twin bill. The first one was all Los Angeles. The Dodgers won it 10-1. Again, Duncan back. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Cavell not squaring again. Took it inside. 2-1. and one. Now Ken Obergfell with Cavell on the last two pitches not squaring has backed up a couple of steps at third. Runner is going. The pitch is taken low. The throw, a one-hopper, and in there safely, Mariano Duncan, his 25th stolen base of the season. As the count goes to three and one on Enos Cabell. Duncan has really used his speed to good advantage in this ballgame. He's made some things happen. The throw really is not a good one. Bounces in front. I think Duncan had the base anyway. Duncan in the first inning singled and on a very minor bobble by Claudel Washington was able to get down to second and over to third on a wild pitch that didn't roll that far away from Cerrone and came home on a base hit by Cabell. Full count now three and two. The on deck hitter Kenny Landro. Here's the 3-2 pitch. He walked him. Second straight walk issued by Zane Smith. Runners are now at first and second with nobody out. And Ken Landro, the batter. Landro in this game has two singles and three at-bats, one RBI. 
He went one for four in the first game, so he's broken out of his slump. He was hitless in 18 at bats coming into this doubleheader. But he's three for seven in the two games tonight. Kind of interesting to see how manager Tommy Lasorda plays it. If you have Landro Bunt, which really is the play, you move the runners along second and third as we look at Steve Shields. Then you kind of take the bat out of the big right-hand hitter up next, Mike Marshall. The Braves can go ahead and walk him and go after the left-handed Greg Brock. And Leo Mazzoni now comes out to the mound to talk it over with Zane Smith. So a lot of different things could be going on here. And while Mazzoni and the rest of the Braves infield gathers around Zane Smith, Kenny Landro and Joey Amalfitano hold a little meeting of their own. Of course, I guess you could have Landro bunt, and if he does move him over and the Braves do walk Marshall, which I'd like to bet they would, then you could send up a guy like old Pedro Guerrero to hit for Greg Brock. And with the bases loaded, you'd have to pitch to Guerrero. That would be the perfect spot to use him. Well, we'll see. Well, the decision has been made by Tommy Lasorda. And we'll see what he has Landro doing here. Braves looking for the bunt. Landro takes a strike after squaring. 0-1. Bell and Duncan get their leads. And the 0 1. Missed 1 and 1. Obert Fell stays in on the edge of the grass at third. Same thing for Gerald Perry at first. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Landro was squaring again. Pulled back as the pitch missed high. 2-1 the count. Tommy Lasorda, the kind of manager from time to time will all of a sudden change the whole strategy. And he's doing it right there. That is one of Tommy's favorite moves as a manager. He'll, he did it with Enos Cabell. And he's done it here with Ken Landro on the count now three and one. He might do it again. Well, I guess if you fake the bunt three times or don't bunt three times, then you can almost expect maybe the high fastball to get the bunt to be popped up and you let a hitter like Landro really rip at it. Here's the three one delivery and there's a soft fly ball. Shallow center field. Hubbard back. Murphy in. Neither can get to it. It dropped for a base hit. And the bases are loaded. The runners had to hold to see if the catch would be made. And that looping base hit just did elude Dale Murphy. And they're loaded now for Mike Marshall. Well, there's the fastball, but Landro hit it right off the end of the bat. Murphy can't get it. He makes a heck of a short hop here, so the ball doesn't get by. The Dodgers have the bases loaded. Bobby Wine comes out. That means that Zane Smith is gone. The Yankees had built up a 10-4 lead in that game. Milwaukee scored two in the six to make it 10-6. Now, Paul Householder, the ex-Red, hit a two-run home run. And the Yankee lead is down to 10-8. They're having a wild one out there. And Zane Smith leads. Steve Shields entering the ball game to replace Zane Smith and face Mike Marshall. A very tough situation. Bases loaded, nobody out. And while he warms up, we'll watch this. There's the new Atlanta pitcher, Steve Shields, making his 15th appearance with the Braves. He spent a good part of the season at Richmond, where he was exclusively a starting pitcher. Six of his 15 appearances with the Braves have been as a starter. And he has a tough assignment here. Bases loaded, nobody out, tie ball game. And a very dangerous hitter, Mike Marshall, in there. Marshall, two for three, two singles and a pop out. Gets away from Cerrone. The runners go back. Cerrone got to it quickly. One ball, no strikes. That was pretty heads-up play by Mariano Duncan. He came, oh, I guess, about halfway. And then he realized that's a terrible gamble, and he got back to third base. There's no one out. You've got one of your 
leading hit is up Mike Marshall and a pretty good one on deck Greg Brock. A lot of teams try to drum into their young players never take a chance in making the first out of an inning at home plate. That is low to an out. And I'll tell you what Marshall is going to see some pitch here. He's probably walking around the batter's box kind of telling himself swing easy don't overswing. Bases loaded no one out and a two and oh count Shields almost has to throw a strike here. Landro, Cabell, and Duncan all get their leads. And the 2 1 delivery. Missed low and inside, 3 0. They could give Marshall the green light here, but I would guess he'd be taking this pitch. And he is all the way, and it's inside, ball four. That forces in a run. Dodgers lead it, 5 4. Marshall given credit for an RBI. That's his 68th of the season. And that's somewhat unusual because Steve Shields normally demonstrates pretty good control. But he walked Marshall on four straight. That's Marshall's sixth RBI of the series. He's having a good series. And that's hit high and deep by Brock to center field. Murphy going back. He looks up. It's a grand slam home run for Greg Brock. And the Dodgers have broken this one open. It is now nine to four. After all these walks, Shields fires a fastball right down the gut. And Greg Brock teed off a high drive. Murph goes all the way to the wall. It's just over the fence. A grand slammer for Brock. The Dodgers lead it 9 to 4. Last night, the Dodgers won 9 7. Tonight, they won 10 to 1. Now they're leading 9 4 with, in effect, three at bats left. There's no one out here in the seventh. Boy, they have scored a lot of runs. Here's Mike Sosha. A lot of the fans head for the exits after that blast. Nothing in one to count on Mike Sosha. There you see the Braves fans who have seen too much Dodger power tonight. Greg Brock now has 19 home runs on the year. And he now has 59 RBIs. He has six RBIs tonight. He had two in the first game. Here's the 1-1 one, one to Sosha, and the breaking ball missed low and inside, 2-1. And, and the 2-1 delivery, that hit him. So things falling apart here on Atlanta in the top half of the seventh inning. Shields had just missed Sosha before, and that one got away, and at least Mike took it in the back, which is the best place. So Sosha, the runner at first, still nobody out in the inning, and Candy Maldonado becomes the seventh Dodger to hit. He came on as a pinch hitter in the sixth inning and grounded out to third. drive base hit right center field Sosha takes the turn at second heads for third and the Dodgers just keep on doing it this is becoming a nightmare inning for the Braves in fact it is a nightmare inning Maldonado hits it right off the plate lines it to right center field Sosha goes around a third a walk a walk a single a walk a grand slam home run a hit batsman, a single to right. There's no one out. The Dodgers have scored five here in the top of the seventh. They have first and third. And here's Steve Sachs. Sachs one for three. And a single back in the second. And time called. And one thing about Bobby Wine, I don't care if, if the manager is a combination of Connie Mack, Walter Alston, and Casey Stengel. If your pitches give up nine and ten runs, you... No way to manage around that. A 
line will be out of play 0-1. That's exactly what the Braves pitchers have done in this series. Ten runs in the first game tonight. Nine runs last night. Nine runs in the second game here. And this inning still far from over. Here's the 0-1. Breaking ball missed. One ball, one strike. Third, Mike Sosha. And Candy Maldonado, the runner at first, with nobody out. Five runs in in the seventh. Here's the 1-1. One, one. Bounced up there again, 2-1. and one. Dodgers really winning the way you have to win. Different heroes every night. Last night, Mike Marshall drove in four. In the first game tonight, Mariano Duncan drove in five. Greg Brock's blow. That's a great play by Hubbard, but the runners get back. Some very alert base running at first by Candy Maldonado. And Hubbard just saved a run there. It's out number one in the inning. Well, here's a heck of a play. A solid line drive headed toward the hole. And Hub gets the first step and dives. That's good play. So the runners remain first and third. One out down. Pitcher Dennis Powell will step in there. That grand slam by Greg Brock, the third. Grand slam of his career. Second this year. The bunt intended to move the runner to second. Obert fell. Throws to Hubbard covering. It got Maldonado down to second. Holding at third was Mike Sosha. So it's a 5-4 sacrifice for Powell. And once again, the Dodgers have hit around. And Mariano Duncan, who walked to open this inning, will step up again. In tonight's first game, the Dodgers hit around in the second inning. Last night, the Dodgers sent 10 men to the plate in the eighth inning. So each of the three games of the series, the Dodgers have had one inning where everybody has come to the plate. Duncan with a single and three official trips. He has scored two runs. Ball one to him. Nine runs, 12 hits for Los Angeles. Four runs, nine hits for Atlanta. Each club with one error. Here's the 1-0. Missing low and away, 2-0. Here's the 2-0 pitch. Chopper up the middle. It'll be second baseman Glenn Hubbard fielding, throwing. Just got him. To end the inning. But it's a big top half of the seven for the Dodgers. They strike for five. And we go to the bottom half. 9-4 Los Angeles. This telecast authorized on a broadcasting rights granted by the Atlanta Braves intended solely for the entertainment of our audience and any publication, rebroadcast, Retransmission or other use of the pictures, descriptions, or accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Braves. And the Turner Broadcasting System is prohibited. We are in the bottom half of the seventh inning. Murphy, Perry, Washington do up against Dennis Powell. Got a chance to win one here. He seeks his first major league win. Brian Holton got his first major league win for the Dodgers last night. Ball one to Murphy, who in this game has homered, walked, and singled. He has driven in three runs. Murphy now with 35 homers, 96 RBIs. You know, the Braves as a team every year hold a little get-together at the end of the season where various awards are passed out, and all the players vote on who the most valuable Brave has been. For the course of a season. I don't even think they need to bother voting this mm -hmm. year. 3 0 the count. And then they have other somewhat lighter awards. Yes, a few lighter ones than that. Murph has a few of those MVP trophies from the Braves and from the National League. And he walks on four straight. That's the first walk issued by Powell. 
Carlos Diaz gets up now in the Dodger bullpen. And Gerald Perry will step in. Yeah, you can just about guess what. Mike Sosha and Enos Cabela telling the young left-hander, look, we have a five-run lead. Throw strikes. We'll run him down. There's Carlos Diaz. He's pitched very well out of the, the Dodger bullpen, along with the two big guys, Tom Needenfewer and Ken Howell. The Mets have beaten the Cardinals 5-4. We'll have all the other scores upcoming for you shortly on our Redman scoreboard. The Mets now a game up on St. Louis. Perry has walked and struck out twice. Here's the 1-0. Inside 2-0. Well, the Dodgers are looking at the perfect combination. I'm sure that Every member of that ball club probably checked the standings this morning and probably said to themselves, now let's see, if we win two and the Reds lose, we'll be nine and a half up. And they're about to do just that. And you know, Lasorda was asked, as Tommy now comes out of the dugout, Lasorda was asked, who do you root for when the Padres play the Reds? And he said, I root for each team to win one game kind of at a time. Reds win one, Padres win one, and he can't miss if that happens. And we'll see if he makes the change here. He's got the left-hander Diaz ready. And although it's really kind of early to start talking along the terms of magic numbers, as you see the Dodgers skipper head back to his dugout, and you don't even bring up the phrase magic number in the other three divisions. They're so close. But it's beginning to dwindle for the Dodgers. If they win this second game, it'll be down to 17. That's any combination of 17 Dodger wins and Reds losses the rest of the way, and the Dodgers have won the West. And that's not too many for being only September 10th. 3 0 now on Gerald Perry. Here's the 3 0 pitch, and that's in for a strike, 3 1. The Dodgers go to Cincinnati after the Atlanta series. Here's the 3 1 strike in the outside corner. Full count 3 and 2. Runner not going on the 3 2 pitch. Perry hits a chopper towards second. Sacks will flip to the shortstop. Duncan in time for the force. No chance for two there. And with one gone, Perry now at first, and Claudel Washington will be the batter. Ronnell's one for three and a run scoring single back in the third. Braves have been outscored in the two games tonight, 19 to five. And that should be easy for Steve Sachs in shallow right field. He's right on the 20 yard line. Two down. And Perry remains at first. And Ken Obergfell will be the batter. He's grounded out to first, walked and reached on an error. Good looking young left hander, Dennis Powell. Has a good live arm. He wasn't even on the roster in spring training, but he went 9-0 at Albuquerque. That earned him a promotion to the Dodgers, and he now seeks his first major league win. Here's the 1-1, bouncing ball right at Sachs, and this will end it. Nothing doing for the Braves in the seventh. And our score remains 9-4 Dodgers. As we go to the eighth inning, we'll check out the Red Man scoreboard. San Diego, a winner over Cincinnati. Pete Rose 0 for 4 that game. That's the big story there. The Mets now a game up in the Cardinals in the East. Philadelphia 3 in the 11th. The Mike Schmidt home run won that one. Rick Russell won his sixth straight complete game over the Cubs. And Houston a winner over San Francisco behind Bob Nepper. 
in the American League. Baltimore won the first one. They're about to lose the nightcap. Toronto a winner. The Yankees appear headed for a win. That'll remain a game and a half difference there. That's a final from Chicago now. A win over Minnesota. Kansas City leading California. Charlie Liebrand pitching against Kirk McCaskill. And there are the rest of your American League scores. And that's your Red Man scoreboard. Here it is, 9-4 Dodgers after Los Angeles swapped the Braves in the first game, 10-1. Enos Cabell, two for three. He has scored three runs. He's also walked, stolen a base, driven in a run. Here's the 1-0 from Shields, and there's a fly ball lifted into right center. Murphy and Washington both over. Murphy takes it. One gone in the eighth. Kenny Landro with three singles and four at-bats. One RBI. The big blow in this game, that grand slam by Greg Brock. Doesn't seem like it was that long ago, and it wasn't that long ago. In fact, it was the early part of this season when the Dodgers and Braves got together. 1-0 pitch. Every story you read, everybody you talked to, the story was the same. The Dodgers could score no runs. That was the case all of last year in the first month or so of this season. Sure, don't you remember the starts of Fernando Valenzuela at the beginning of the year, and he was pitching one-run games and shutouts and not winning the games. You know, he'd leave in the ninth inning or tenth inning with a game tied 0-0. They just couldn't score any runs for him. And has certainly turned around for the Dodgers. Perry up with this one. He'll take it himself and beat Lander to the bag for out number two. And they really began to score runs when they began tinkering with their batting order. Steve Sachs taken out of the leadoff spot, dropped to eighth. Mariano Duncan instilled at shortstop. Pedro Guerrero moved to the outfield. His hitting picked up immediately. And everything seemed to follow that once Guerrero started. Became very contagious. Everybody began to hit. Still, the story of this Dodger team is their pitching. Yeah, I'm going to say that. You have pitching like that. They lead the league in ERA. They have an overwhelming top four in their rotation. You don't need a lot of runs. Here's the 0-1 bouncing by everybody. 1-1 one and, one and Mike Marshall. Not many folks left here at the ballpark. Here's the 1-1 one -one breaking ball. It foul off to the right. Count one and two. The 1-2 pitch on the way, missing inside, 2-2. Two two. Carlos Diaz coming in now from the Dodger bullpen, so we may be seeing him in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Dave Schuler has gotten up for Atlanta. There's Diaz. And here's the 2-2. Two -two. Ground ball, base hit. And that's the third hit of the game for Mike Marshall. It is the 13th hit of the game for Los Angeles. And here's the latest Dodger hero, Greg Brock. Two walks, a strikeout, and a grand slam home run. <laughs> Shields delivers a breaking ball, missing low ball one. Brock beginning to develop into the kind of player the Dodgers hoped he would be. They were very patient with him. Here's the 1 0. One ball, one strike. Marshall leads. And the 1 1. Hit foul off to the right. It's now one and two. Up 
I'm a little bit surprised that Tommy Lasorda has gone this far with his regulars after that five-run seventh. I thought we'd see some of the kids. Maybe we will defensively. In the bottom of the inning, he likes to give his regulars a couple of innings off. He's got plenty of people. He's got 35 active players on his roster. Here's the one-two. Struck him out this time. So Brock won the battle the first time. Shields gets in this time around. No runs, one hit, one left. We go to the bottom of the eighth. Still a five-run lead for the Dodgers. As we go to the bottom half of the eighth inning, a couple of changes for the Dodgers. They've put in a new third baseman, Bob Baylor. Enos Cabell gets the rest of the game off. Baylor will bat in the number nine spot. And the new pitcher is former Brave left-hander Carlos Diaz. Carlos having a good year, making his 38th appearance. There you see the rest of his numbers. Very low walks total for all those innings and a very high strikeout total. So Dennis Powell did a pretty good job for the Dodgers. He came on in the fourth inning, wound up working four. Gave up four hits, just one run. He issued one walk and recorded one strikeout and is in line to win his first game in the majors. If the rest of the Dodger bullpen can hold that five run lead. Rick Cerrone leads off the eighth. He is popped out, grounded out. Hit into a one four three double play. Diaz delivers, bouncing ball right at Steve Sachs. One pitch, one out. That'll bring up Paul Suvella. Suvella's had a perfect game. He's gone three for three. Three singles, he has scored one run. We'll get a pinch hitter next for Steve Shields, I believe. Grounded toward short, Duncan throwing on to first. And on two pitches, Diaz has retired the first two hitters here in the bottom half of the eighth inning. Now we'll get Paul Rungi on as a pinch hitter for Steve Shields. Rungi appeared in the first game as a pinch hitter and doubled. So he is now two out of ten as a pinch hitter this year. Barring a miracle finish by the Braves here, the record under Bobby Wine will be a 500 one after tonight. It stands at 8 and 7 right now. One ball, no strikes on Rungi. Here's the 1-0 pitch. Downstairs, too. Now, that second game over now in Boston. Red Sox beat the Orioles in game two, 5-3. There's the 2-0. Upstairs, ball three. The Dodger bullpen of Diaz, Needenfuhr, Ken Howell done a good job this year. We've talked a lot about the starting pitching, but look at those bullpen earned run averages. Diaz 2.44, Howell 3.13, Eden Fewer 2.37. This will be out of play. And the count full three and two. Diaz has his sign. And the 3-2 pitch coming. Looped into right field. Mike Marshall right there. 
Backs up about a step and takes it, and it's a 1-2-3 inning for Carlos Diaz. Nothing doing for the Braves. We go to the ninth. It's 9-4 Dodgers. Another great super football Saturday here at the Superstation at 12 noon Eastern time, the Georgia Bulldogs and the Baylor Bears. And then the evening, really a terrific game, Pittsburgh takes on Ohio State. It's all right here on WTBS. Really a triple hitter that day because in between at 5.05, the Braves and the Giants. So we have two football games and a baseball game as we have all the sports right here at the Super Station. Dave Schuler worked a scoreless inning in the first of the twin bill. And TBS services are syndicating Arizona State and Michigan State this Saturday. That's Pete Van Wuren's game. Pete and Ron Kramer will do that ball game from East Lansing. Down now one and one on Mike Sosha. Sosha over three. It should be a pretty good battle. Those two teams both considered sleepers in the day conferences they're in. What time does that game begin? That begins at noon Eastern time. Okay. Line up your sets. <laughs> Two and one the count now on Sosha. So really it's a quadruple hitter if you look at it that way. The best way to find that Big Ten game in the Midwest is just check your local listings and they'll tell you what station that one will be on. I guess you won't be able to make it back for the 5-10 game. I'll be with you Sunday though. Okay. Well we won't dock you too severely then. Now the 2-2 pitch to Sosha and it missed low and inside three and two. It is 9-4 Los Angeles in game two of a doubleheader. The first game of which went to the Dodgers 10-1. And that ball drilled to deep right field. Washington watches this one go. Mike Sosha strikes again. It's 10-4. For Sosha, his seventh homer of the year. And the Dodgers have scored 20 runs in this doubleheader. And of the seven home runs that Mike has hit, three of them have come in this ballpark. He just murders the Braves. Shula got a pitch up and in, and Sosha, who normally hits line drives, singles and doubles, turned on it and hit it out in the night. Here's Candy Maldonado taking a strike. That's 29 runs in three games. That's Moida. There's the 0-1. One. one and one. Dodgers about to go 11 and three against the Braves for the year. And the count two and one. It's really funny how things turn around too. The, the last three or four years, the Dodgers have really handled the Braves. You know, back in the mid 70s, late 70s, when the Braves were a last place ball club and the Dodgers were up there contending, the Braves used to go into Los Angeles and play the Dodgers here and beat them quite a bit. But not lately. Two and two, the count on. Candy Maldonado. There's the 2-2 offering. He got him with a breaking ball. So Schuler strikes out Maldonado. One gone in the ninth inning. And Steve Sachs will be the batter. Sachs one for four in this game. In the opener, he was one for three. Schuler delivers. One ball, no strikes. Schuler's pitched for several organizations. Pitched briefly with the California Angels, the major league level, a few years back. Here's the 1 0. One ball, one strike. Dave Schuler now 31 years old. He'll be 32 next month. Past the pitcher. Shortstop Zuvella has it. 
Dug out of there by Perry and not in time, says uh, first base umpire John Kibler. I guess Perry either didn't have the bag or he was still juggling the ball. He didn't, have, those two. He didn't have the bag. I think we'll see it on the replay, too. Perry was trying to scoop the low throw by Zavella. And let's see if his foot comes off. I think it did. I actually didn't look at it from that angle, but I think that's what John Kibler said. So an error should be charged, probably on the throw by Zavella. Carlos Diaz batting for himself now. A correction, this is Bob Baylor. They have given Steve Sachs a base <laughs> hit on that, uh, I tell you. Actually, it's a private joke between Van Weeren and myself and Kerry and Van Weeren and myself. Whatever we say, I guarantee it's going to be the opposite. Bob Baylor drives one into center field. That'll probably go as an error. <laughs> You know, it's kind of like I that. sometimes wonder if the official score here at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium watches the same game that the rest of the people here do. <laughs> I really do. It's kind of like that psychological test. You know, you say blue, I say gray. You say dark, I say light. You know, and it happens. 16 hits now for the Dodgers. Dave Anderson's going to pinch hit for Mariano Duncan. 207 hitter for the year, four homers, 16 RBIs. Nothing in one the count. This has been about as one-sided a doubleheader as I can ever recall seeing. 10-1 in the first game. It's 10-4 in the night cap. And the Dodgers may not be through yet. Only one out of the inning. Into shallow right center field. Murphy coming in. So is Washington. Murphy makes the call on the catch. And the runners go back. And now Carlos Diaz will bat for himself. <laughs> Diaz has been up only once this year. He's 0 for 1. Baylor, the runner at first. Steve Sachs at second. Two men out. Nothing in one. The count on Diaz. About the only kind of folks left here at this hour. Part of the night crowd. It is nothing in two. Well, we'll try it again tomorrow. Fernando Valenzuela against Steve Bedrosian. Well, good. At least we only have Valenzuela to face. Now the 0-2 pitch. Just missed one and two. The Dodgers in this doubleheader with 26 hits, 20 runs. And about to go nine and a half games up on Cincinnati, who got beaten by San Diego tonight, 3-2. Pete Rose hitless. And that's a strikeout of Diaz. The second strikeout of the inning for Dave Schuler. But we go to the bottom half of the ninth inning. The Dodgers have struck for 10 again. It's 10-4, Los Angeles. Dave Anderson, who pinch hit in the top of the inning, takes over defensively at short here in the bottom half of the ninth. The Braves, a badly beaten ball club tonight, unless they can somehow rally for six or seven runs in this bottom half of the ninth inning. Milt Thompson to lead it off, then Glenn Hubbard, then Dale Murphy. Thompson, two out of four. His good work continues. He's still over 300, batting 315. Diaz would not qualify for a save here. The lead was too big when he took over. But he is nevertheless trying to preserve Dennis Powell's first major league win. And on one pitch, he's got one out here in the ninth. Dennis Powell, a native of Moultrie, Georgia. He might have some friends and family in the ballpark tonight. Glenn Hubbard has a double, a walk, a fly out to center, and a fly out to right in the second game. One 
ball, no strikes. The Braves will drop to 21 games under 500. And it's now one and one on Hubbard. Well, they've got some game going on in Milwaukee. They're in the ninth inning now. Yankees leading the Brewers 13 to 10. Look out, Bobby. Yankees need to win that game to stay within a game and a half of the Blue Jays, who beat Detroit two to one. Here's the one two that got him in the foot. It remains a ball and two strikes. Diaz, a native of Hawaii. Here's the one, two. Got him with a breaking ball. Diaz has retired five in a row. Two gone in the bottom of the ninth. It's all up to Dale Murphy. Who has done his job here in the second game of the twin bill with a two-run homer, a walk, a run-scoring single, another walk, two for two with three RBIs. But that's been about it for the Braves. And believe me, there's nobody down there in a Braves uniform that feels very good about the way this series has gone so far. Even when you're out of the race, you don't mind playing the teams that are in it because you can spoil their chances, maybe knock somebody else out. He's going the other way so far in this series. Two and another count. Here's the 2 0 -oh pitch to Murphy, fouled it back two and one. Two gone, bottom of the ninth. And a 2-1 delivery. Bouncing ball to third, off the glove of Baylor, picked up by Anderson. His throw on to first won't be in time. That'll be a base hit for Murphy's, three for three. Baylor's had some trouble in this series. He's come in to a couple of ball games late defensively at third and he's had three hits off his glove like that. Here's Perry who's 0 for 3 and he takes a strike 0 and 1. Braves now with 10 hits in the ball game. Diaz delivers the 0-1 fouled off at the plate. Nothing into the count. It is a final now from Milwaukee. The Yankees beat the Brewers 13 to 10. They stay within a game and a half of Toronto. Milwaukee had 17 hits in the game. The Yankees had 11. Here's the 0-2. Fouled away. And the 0-2 from Diaz. Hit foul down toward the Dodger bullpen. Here's the 0-2 to Perry. It's low, one and two. If the Dodgers are able to clinch early, We'll start hearing that old mm -hmm. argument again. Is it better to clinch early and be able to sit back and rest until the playoffs, or is it better to have that momentum going right to the final weekend? You know what? It's just good to win, and that's what the Dodgers just did. Diaz struck out Gerald Perry. The Dodgers sweep the doubleheader. We'll be back with the totals of Game 2 right after this.